Mass for You at Home is proudly supported by Catholic Mission. Be the difference in someone's life today. Phone 1800 257 296 or visit catholicmission.org.au. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Today we begin a new season, a new liturgical year in the life of the Church, the season of Advent, where we're preparing for the coming of Christ and Bethlehem. And the church does this in a number of different ways, through the change of the color of vestments. We won't sing the Gloria until Christmas, and not because it's a, sort of a, a sad tone, but to make us more joyful and glorious when we sing it on Christmas Day and Christmas Eve. Conscious of our sins before the Lord, let us now acknowledge them and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you call your people to turn away from sin. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You teach us wisdom and write your truth in our inmost heart. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You forgive us through the ministry of reconciliation. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Grant your faithful, we pray, Almighty God, the resolve to run forth to meet your Christ with righteous deeds at his coming, so that, gathered at his right hand, they may be worthy to possess the heavenly kingdom. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the prophet Jeremiah. See, the days are coming, and it is the Lord who speaks. When I am going to fulfill the promise I made to the house of Israel and the house of Judah, in those days and at that time, I will make a virtuous branch grow for David, who shall practice honesty and integrity in the land. In those days, Judah shall be saved, and Israel shall dwell in confidence. And this is the name the city will be called, the Lord our integrity. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. To you. my soul to you. Lord, make me know your ways. Lord, teach me your paths. Make me walk in your truth and teach me. For you are God, my Savior. To you, O oh Lord, I lift my soul. I lift my soul.
A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. May the Lord be generous in increasing your love and make you love one another and the whole human race as much as we love you. And may he so confirm your hearts in holiness that you may be blameless in the sight of God and Father when our Lord Jesus Christ comes with all his saints. Finally, brothers, we urge you and appeal to you in the Lord Jesus to make more and more progress in the kind of life you are meant to live the life that God wants, as you learnt from us and as you are already living it. You have not forgotten the instructions we gave you on the authority of the Lord Jesus. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Lord, show us your mercy and love and grant us your salvation. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. And A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus said to his disciples, There will be signs in the sun and moon and stars, on earth nations in agony, bewildered by the clamor of the ocean and its waves, men dying of fear as they await what menaces the world, for the powers of heaven will be shaken. And then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. When these things begin to take place, Stand erect, hold your heads high, because your liberation is near at hand. Watch yourselves, or your hearts will be coarsened with debauchery and drunkenness and the cares of life, and that day will be sprung on you suddenly like a trap. For it will come down on every living man on the face of the earth. Stay awake, praying at all times, for the strength to survive all that is going to happen and to stand with confidence before the Son of Man. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Every Gospel of the first Sunday of Advent, the Church always gives us an apocalyptic Gospel. Jesus is telling us to stay awake, to be watchful, to be vigilant. But you might say, hang on a minute, that's apocalyptic. Aren't we preparing for the coming of Jesus, the baby at Bethlehem that wasn't recognized by anybody except the good shepherds and, and the wise men? So why does the church do this? Because she wants to have a continuity between what we celebrated last Sunday, the Feast of Christ the King, where the church very explicitly turns her mind and heart to Christ's second coming in glory, an event that has not yet happened, and so allows a continuity with that. But there's also another reason. The reason is to always be watchful, and there's nothing like an apocalyptic message to make people alarmed and to make them stand on edge so that they will be ready. Why does our Lord tell us these things? Is it because he wants us to be filled with fear, to be anxious, to be worried in some way? No, but because he wants us to be watchful, because he knows how easy it is for the human heart to fall asleep, and that if we are not careful, we will gradually fall asleep, little by little. You know, in the times in previous ages in the history of the church, like now, there are people who think we are in apocalyptic times. And I say this to you because if you do think we are in apocalyptic times, then you're not on your own. Pope St. Gregory the Great, who was Pope from 590 to 604, thought he was living in the last days. He thought it was the end times. By that stage, you might recall from history that Rome had already fallen, that in fact there had been several barbarian invasions. And when the Lombards were coming in in 593 AD, he was thinking, 
We are in apocalyptic times. And in fact, there's nothing missing except the signs and the sun and the moon and the stars and the clamor of the waves. So Jesus is really telling us when that time comes, things will be really shaken and even the disturbance will be shown and reflected in the shaking of the elements. So he tells us this, to be watchful. But as I said a moment ago, it's always about being ready. So what does it mean to be ready? It means to be always in a stance of prayer. It means to always have a supernatural outlook. It means to not get carried away by the goings-on of the culture around us, to seek to want to belong and fit in with the worldly way of thinking to the point that we are beginning to compromise, even in small amounts, on what's going on in the gospel. And if during this time of Advent, we actually make a very clear point to stick to our faithfulness to prayer each day and to read a little bit of scripture each day and sincerely to put it into practice, believe me, you will have your heads raised high when that moment comes, if it is in our lifetime or not, for the Lord to come to us. Because ultimately, the call from the Lord that we're expecting is the call for us personally to leave this earth. And when that moment comes, we want to be ready. Let us now profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. As we watch for the time of our liberation, let us bring our needs before the Father of all that the church will spread the gospel, responding to the signs of the times. Lord, set us free. Lord, hear our prayer. That civic leaders will work for peace and harmony between nations and peoples. Lord, set us free. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who suffer in pain of addiction will be released. Lord, set us free. Lord, hear our prayer that in this time of pandemic, we will respond to the needs of the most vulnerable with love and compassion. Lord, set us free. Lord, hear our prayer. God of all time, as we begin this season of hope, we pray that we will be ready to meet your Son. Hear the prayers we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. O come, O come, Emmanuel, and ransom captive Israel, that mourns in lonely exile here, until the Son of God appear. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel. Shall come to thee, O Israel. O come, thou wisdom from on high, who art rest all things mightily, to us the path of knowledge show, and teach us in her. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. 
for the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands, for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. Accept, we pray, O Lord, these offerings we make, gathered from among your gifts to us, and may what you grant us to celebrate devoutly here below gain for us the prize of eternal redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he assumed at his first coming the lowliness of human flesh, and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago, and opened for us the way to eternal salvation that when he comes again in glory and majesty, and all is at last made manifest, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which now we dare to hope. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins, do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith Save us, Saviour of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and ministered to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, 
we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Brian, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the, For the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord, Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the of the world. Grant us peace. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Christ, remember when thou shalt come again upon the clouds of heaven with all thy shining train when every eye shall see. Let us pray. May these mysteries, O Lord, in which we have participated, profit us, we pray, for even now as we walk amid passing things, you teach us by them to love the things of heaven and hold fast to what endures through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. I'm Brian Mascord. I invite you to consider, if you are able to, to provide financial assistance to help extend the 50-year legacy of Mass for You at Home.